Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a nut in here. This is on a 2010 Sport Track. Two-piece drive line, center support bearing's gone out. Duh. Discontinued part, but I found one in Florida on eBay for two-wheel drive. This is a two-wheel drive, it's not a four-wheel drive. But there's a nut in here, and there's some little fold-over flanges. And it's either a 17, 18, or a 19 millimeter, I'll, I'll find out which. But I'd seen on YouTube. There's nothing on YouTube for a sport track. There was something for a, an escape or a, a transit van. I don't know what. But supposedly that yoke comes off. Hopefully. And you don't have to buy a whole new drive line. i got to paste this video all together. You can see I'm getting the nut out. It's 17 millimeter on this one. And I can turn it by hand. I've got it that far out. I'll just see if this yoke will start to slip off. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, well, I'm still working on this thing. Right here, we're changing the input shaft U joint because it's sticky. And using, I got a 12 ton press. We've got the yoke off here, and we're ready for the center support bearing to go on. This, and getting the U joint out, came off by itself after you got this nut. And, u-shaped washer out of the way here and I, I seen everything okay uh, that just goes on there once once this is back on it <clears throat> goes in here and tighten it up whatever it is sorry about that I keep moving around here I'm not very good at this okay but uh, got the u-joints out got the two-wheel drive 2010 sport track center sport bearing and we're changing all three u-joints while we're at it because eh, it's it goes and eh, it's stiff flat spot and eh, eh, eh. so we'll be working on this one last if I don't shoot myself in the meantime for taking this job on to begin with of course it's the wife's like I got a choice huh <laughs> Okay, well, sorry for such a bad video, but uh, we'll piece it together and see what we come up with. So at least you other guys out there with a sport track, I think it's from 2008 to 2010, or maybe 07 to 2010, I think it's 08, 09, and 10. Uh, <clears throat> I got this two-piece drive line and uh, center sport bearings, and I haven't found anything on YouTube other than what this is gonna be, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, sorry for the poor quality, but gives you an idea of what's going on. Thanks. Okay, one of the obstacles we're trying to overcome here, again, sorry for the video, but if you look down in here, the thing is trying to get these staked U-joints and get the center caps back even in preparation to, to, to try to get them out. Now I'd seen in one of the videos with the F-150 kit, there's a shim that you can use. Comes in the kit. My kit didn't have that, but I made a little shim here that's been working. And you put that over, over that piece and then try to work it on out using the ball joint C-clamp piece. And then I had to use a couple of these, these rings and the press, putting these like that, you know, 
and if that's dangerous and tricky but you put one on each side you know and then lay lay your thing back across the top and slowly press it down to get both caps out even so you can get some space in there and hopefully get that spacer on to finish pushing it out i know pokey dokey but man i'm in the south pacific islands we don't have a lot of resources and you do what you can do and that's it man again i apologize for such a lousy video but i'm just doing what i can do man to help you guys with the 2010 sport trucks you know if you do it yourself first you'll have half a clue of what's going on anyway thanks i'll be back with some more okay guys i know this is really mickey mouse but to hold my that shim in place <clears throat> i'm using a hose clamp around the u-joint and the spacer and i put that shim in there i know it's mickey mouse man but it worked on on, on getting this out you destroy the hose clamp but big deal now if you're wondering what i made these shims out of um it's a shelf bracket just a small thin metal shelf bracket um i'll go get one and show you there it is guys the shelf bracket i took and cut it and took a piece off i took took the back bent this off and then just started shaping it around to or some roundness tapping it to fit the circumference of these things the cross joint across the center whatever you call it and that's how i made my spacer mickey mouse but hey do what we can do oh shit okay you can see i'm pushing it in with the c-clamp the the uh, ball joint thing and push this in and this one's starting to come out now uh i'll take it back to the press maybe because it's just a big hassle but uh like i say hose clamps are cheap the shame will be all right but it's getting that piece working it out until you can get get it out far enough to get both sides going all right mickey mouse but hey just do what you can do i'm getting tired man i'm an old man later okay guys i got this one out uh just a note using a hose clamp probably not a good idea if you can keep your shim from uh, popping off uh it works great without trying to hassle with a hose clamp and fighting it later because it gets wedged in there pretty good as well not a bright idea but it worked first time thought second time would be great but uh, it turned out to be bad idea anyway okay one thing is i know everybody else mentions in them and i didn't yet but before you take these things all apart you want to make give you some reference markings and what i do i just i don't have a paint pen i I don't know where you can find them down this island i use my grinding wheel and die grinder and just notch a little spots for reference line up and they don't wipe off so anyway onward and upward hey guys next day i've had to make me a new new shim spacer thing this time i'm using a uh using a uh, <laughs> man i'd be someday when i learn to see and take a video we'll, we'll be in good shape huh ha <laughs> ha who am i kidding anyway i'm using a uh, curtain rod hanger and then i cut it shaped cut and shaped it to uh, fit around this u-joint the old one and so i'm going to use that as the spacer to go on there and see if i can finish driving the caps out okay sorry again for a lousy video and being all over the place but do what we can do okay guys we've got the back yoke 
finally apart. Got the caps out. This was a big job, quite a hassle. And now we got to get the, the new U joints in, but we're going to have. You need to do some cutting here because it won't slip in all the way because of that length. So both sides have a little cutting to do here. And then get the U-joints in. Put the caps on, button this thing up. More to come later. Okay guys, look. Problem I was <coughs> run into. One, these center crosses, this is what the part number per Ford's kit that I was given from a Ford dealer in Clovis, California. And it cross-referenced over to this part number in Rock Auto. And it showed the other OEM number that I was given. But you can see these center crosses are approximately 75.5 millimeters in length. Okay, the ones that came out are 73.5 in length so we had a little problem there well we overcome it but with that extra length trying to get it to fit in the yokes needed a little work silly millimeter will do see these ridges here there's one on each side I'm not going to go to all this trouble but I took my die grinder and took those ridges out. So now I've got this one in. And the other problem is the snap rings were, they, they, they fit right on the caps. The, the grooves are there. So the length, the extra length makes up. You can see the, the cap there and the groove where the snap ring is going to go. There isn't a much, so it doesn't require the spacers like some of the other kits that the F-150s called for, this 06, 05 F-150s. Had a little washer that had to drop in. And I've seen uh, U-joints that have inner snap rings. These are outer snap rings. And they look like, like they line up so that extra length takes up that gap. Just the snap rings are a little too small. They don't sit in there secure. So I know perhaps I don't. I can't run down to the snap ring store because we don't have one. And uh, so I've taken and I've spread spread my snap rings out some, and then I'll, I'll put them back in and, and uh, secure them. I know probably Mickey Mouse to a bunch of you, but hey, you do what you can do. Later. Okay, hey guys, here's my bike. It's Monday. We got the center support bearing on the drive shaft. We got the back flanges all together and U joints in. Snap rings are a little tricky again, but anyway, I wanted to point out, trying to put this uh, yoke back on for the uh, <clears throat> center support piece. It, uh, I'm really bad at videos, guys. <laughs> You're gonna have to bear with me. Anyway, I don't know if you can see inside I can't even see inside this stupid thing. Um, there, you can see the splining, but there's one set of splines that are just a little bit different, like a keyway spline. And it's right there. I wish this thing would light up. I can't, I if I had another hand, I'd hold a flashlight on it. But. Anyway, does see it right? I don't know if you can. There's focus right there. See that kind of like that spot on the top there, and, and that spot there. This thing won't go on just any other way until you get those lined up. 
And now I can't find it lining up. But anyway, that's, yeah, you can see right there. It's just a little bit different in the splining. So it looks like it's got a, um, can't get it on there wrong, I guess. Let's put it so that way. Uh, let me finish this thing up and get it back in the car. Thanks, guys. Later. Hey, guys. One of the other things I want to point out. That, again, that's 17 millimeter. I don't know what the torque is on it. Uh, didn't bother to look it up. Just tightened it up and folded the spring back over and locked it up. Everything's in there. But I wanted to point out on all these U-joints that I got, they got the Zerk fittings out here. But once you got everything together, there's no way in hell you're getting a grease gun on them. So I've been packing them with uh, packing them with wheel bearing grease by hand before I put them on. So I, they're they're good and greased up in there instead of just the factory stuff. So you, if you run into that, load them up, and put down the center hole, and pack the shit out of them if you can. Just sharing what I've run into. Thanks.